Alright dudes, we are back. Today we're going to take off this suspension fork and put on this rigid fork. This bike is from the GT Resto. Everything's basically the same. I just switched out the stem up there and took off the grips. I might switch out that seat post as well for a rigid one. But yeah, let's take a look at the fork. These are the Magic Components ATB forks. All terrain bike. And they are 4130 chromo, chromoly. Pretty nice design, nice and streamlined. You can see uh, it kind of has one mount here just for your racks and stuff. One hole up there if you want to run a fender or something. And then it also has the eyelets down the bottom. And then it's got the V brakes. It's all canty mounts on here. Pretty standard. Uh, so the welds are pretty nice. I don't know if you can see it there. Pretty solid construction. I think it's a pretty clean looking fork, nice shape to it. There's also a little bit of rake, I'll put up the number. Here you can see kind of the rake. But yeah, it solves the problem of if you're looking for a rigid threadless fork. Yeah, not too many options out there, so I think this is pretty cool that they made this. It doesn't have a disc mount, so yeah, it's purposely made for older bikes, which I think is pretty cool. And then overall with the weight, it's pretty light. I can weigh it in a second. Okay, this ends up being 1340 grams with a full steerer. Here's the axle to crown. So from the crown, which is this part, to the center of the dropouts is 400, 400 millimeters. And then why that matters is because it's gonna affect the forks we're replacing. So let's just measure these. It's gonna be 410. So yeah, 10 mil difference. I don't think it's gonna matter much. So if I just line it up there, you can kind of see the distance between here and here. It's going to be 10 mil. So what it'll do is drop the frame down a tiny bit on the front, which I think it's okay. So yeah, the fork should generally work on most older style frames, uh, kind of the frames that we like if you're watching. But if you have a newer frame, uh, I think it's going to actually matter a lot because you can see if I drop this down, it's going to drop down maybe like 20 mil. I have done it before, which I'll chuck a picture up. I put uh, dirt jumper ones on here, which are 430, I think. I'll get them out and compare. Okay, so these are the Identity rebate forks. I had these on my uh, Kona just here. And these are uh, axle to crown, it's 455. So yeah, massive difference. I actually ended up swapping these back on, the Marzocchi's back on, just because they ride a little bit better and I didn't have uh, as much uh, BB drop. So good ideas to pay close attention to what your factory came with, uh, what type of shocks or how much travel it came with. And if it's close enough, the right amount, these forks should work. So a few things to consider just before I take this apart is one, you're gonna need a hanger. If you're running candy brakes, if you're running V brakes, you're fine. Or a hanger that comes from that top mount. And then the second thing is you're gonna need uh, a threadless stem. I already have a threadless stem with the converter. You might have a quill stem like this. So you might need to get a different stem and bars. And then thirdly, you're gonna need a new headset because this is a thread headset and that we're going to threadless. So yeah, need a threadless 118 headset. And I might've mentioned this before, this has to be, this tubing has to be for 118. Uh, Fox because this is for one one eighth. If this is a uh, one inch, it won't work All right, so here's some of the tools that you'll need. Uh, you need a uh, let's see what's called headset cup remover That's the tool. Uh, this is for one and one eighth specifically uh, I did make a smaller one one inch one in my previous video so you can uh, If you don't have one of these you can kind of see how to make one and then this is a fork crown setter tool and once again it's got the OS here which means oversized one and one eighth um, yeah shout out Darren for these tools pretty sick if you don't have one you can probably use an old stem or something maybe just bang it on uh, but yeah you gotta try it yourself and then here is a headset cup press tool once again you just put the two plates on press it in and if you don't have one of these you can um, yeah, maybe try to bang it with the 2x4. I heard people done it with that like that as well. All right, just taking off the bars here. This is a, a Knight Bike Company stem. It's a rough neck, rip off of a tough neck, kind of like BMX style. I thought it was pretty good. I just got a second hand. It had a little kind of dog on it here. Just taking off the threaded headset. You just kind of unscrew it. Just be careful any washers or anything. 
take out the bearings, um, keep all the stuff together if you want to reuse it. And then after you do that, you should just be able to pop off the floor. Just like that. And then, yeah, had to undo the brake here to get rid of uh, get rid of the wheel. You can see I'm just unhooking the brake from the lever here so I don't have to redo it, recut it, hopefully. And then, yeah, just quick release, taking off the fork. All right, that's off. Uh, don't forget about this. There's a, a little bearing in there. All right, so just check to understand here. I did unhook the, the back brake. You can see it's just loose here, just so I could clamp it onto the frame and it wasn't clamping onto the wire. And now we're ready to tap these cups out. All right, so this ended up being, uh, yeah, way easier. You just kind of slide the tool in, make sure it clicks and then um, bang it down. Yeah, having the right tool definitely saves you a lot of time uh, if you have it. But yeah, if you don't, you can always try to make your own. And then yeah, same with the top. Um, once again, you can put your hand over the cup if you want to not have it shoot out. Um, yeah, just be careful. All right, that's done it. Pretty easy, pretty nice. And these are the old cups. Just gonna give this a quick clean in here and it's ready to install the new ones. All right, headset finally came. I ended up having to get just get a cheap one because my other one got lost in the mail, I'm pretty sure. Just what it looks like. Yeah, so everything's in here. It comes with star nut as well, and it's just cage bearings, but it has this little bit that covers it up. So yeah, I've never seen that before, so pretty cool. But yeah, spun, spins pretty well. I gave it a test and it's ready to go. Here I am just giving it a quick uh, quick clean on the inside. I'm use I ended up using a little bit of sandpaper just to take some of the flakes off and a bit of WD-40. It's just uh, 600 wet and dry. Let's give it a nice clean before the within the cups. Don't forget to grease it up. You can either grease the inside here or grease the cups or grease both. Um, but yeah, I find it easier to do to install one cup at a time. And then yeah, basically just wind it on and make sure it's straight. Sometimes it might take you a few times to line it up. Sometimes I undo it just to do it straight again to put more pressure on one side of the cup if it's going in uneven. And then um, just take your time and should be should be fairly easy. So yeah, these cups went in pretty easy. Uh, I think the top one was a bit tighter than the bottom one. But yeah, because they didn't have graphics on it, you didn't have to really line them up. They just kind of went in. All right, that's on there, nice and clean. Pretty sweet. All right, time to install the crown race. This is the bottom of the headset where the bearings sit on. And yeah, you just grease up where it goes on the fork. Make sure it's nice and straight before you tap it in. I ended up kind of just tapping it here and it wasn't straight, so I had to undo it, pop it off and then yeah, restrain it up before I started tapping again. But yeah, honestly, it doesn't need that much pressure. You can just use the tool and bang it down. You don't need a hammer or anything. Bang it until it doesn't go in anymore and make sure it's flat all the way around. There's no gaps. And then that's basically it. It was ready to put in the fork. Here it is. Things looking pretty sick already. Um, next thing to do, I need to kind of size up the spaces and where I want to cut the steerer. Um, so yeah, just putting all the headset bits on. Kind of looks cool with the <laughs> the uh, stem slam, but I'm not going to run it like that. I think I need a few spaces at least, and I don't want to cut this uh, fork too short in case I want to put on a different bike later. But yeah, I end up looking at three or two 10 mil spaces. I think I end up going like this, like two 10 mil and a little, a little one and then three on top. And then yeah, just mark it on top, scribe it with uh, an old spoke and then it's ready to cut. And when you're cutting it, just make sure you cut a few mils down to allow room for the top cap to kind of press down. And you also want to make sure that your headset is completely compressed before you uh, scratch in the mark as well. Otherwise, you're going to have to recut the the stereo or use another spacer. Yeah, for some reason this stereo was way harder to cut than the last one. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the material or just that my blades getting dull. But yeah, just took a little bit more effort 
and yeah, I just gave it a sand on top of file as well, and that's all ready to go. Time to install the star nut here. If you have a tool, definitely use the tool. I kind of just freestyled it. You can kind of get it to work, try to get it lined up as uh, straight as possible before you tap it in, but you might think when you keep tapping, sometimes it straightens back up. And then make sure your bolt's nice and straight. You might have to tap it from the side, but yeah, that ended up working. And then chuck it on here for the final time, I think. <laughs> That went in pretty well. And then putting the rest of the headset bits on, the stem spaces, and then the cap. And then I wound on the cap and it was uh, nice and snug, so I didn't have to recut the stereo, which is great. <laughs> also, I didn't have any stem spaces left, so yeah, I got lucky there. And then here, just putting on the levers and the bars back on. I ended up having to, yeah, do it like this because the cables were kind of short, uh, but end up being uh being all right and then here just hooking on the back brake again so yeah everything's on back brake's already working and i assume the shift is working as well and then here just installing the, the front brake not too much to it bit of grease wind it on so while i'm waiting for the hanger i'm gonna clean this up the seat post it's pretty busted up but we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna give it a wash and then a buff up and then try to maybe get some paint on this. Get rid of the scratches. Yeah, just trying to give this seat post uh, once over to make it look a little bit better. I know it's probably not in good, uh, the best condition with tons of scratches, but you kinda, yeah, just do what you can. So just clean it up with WD-40 and a wire brush and then um, just wipe down everything, make sure it's clean. I use a little bit of tea cut just to take off the burrs, off the scratches on the back. And then here I'm just using a little bit of house paint, just black house paint, just water it down a lot and you do a few coats. Um, of course it's not going to match up uh, to the anodized black, but what it will is just take off the, the edges visually on the, on the scratches itself. So yeah, it's kind of what it looks like. The paint was still wet but it'll look a bit better once it's dry. And then yeah, just grease it up. Be careful when you put it in, because you only want to go down so far. If you go down lower, I'm pretty sure the paint will scratch again, um, but it ended up being not too bad at all. So yeah, here it is with the STG saddle. And that was it. All right, here it is. Uh, you know, not perfect, obviously but I think better than seeing all those scratches. We'll do till I get a new seat post, if I get a new seat post. Another thing I check with Fox is to see if it's bar spinnable. You can see it cleaves the pedal here. Uh, it's pretty tight. You could probably do it, uh, or you could run um, shorter cranks. But yeah, just in case if anyone's wondering. All right, just chucking these grips on. I think these would look pretty cool, because arrows, <laughs> I don't know, triangles. <laughs> Just took the bar ends off and just gonna chuck them on. All right, that's all done on the. I think it looks all right. All right, so this finally came. Yes. And here's the hanger that goes on the front of the fork. I'm gonna install it. All right, so just installing this brake hanger, brake cable hanger right here. I never used one of these before, and yeah. I usually didn't use it because I thought it was a bit cleaner uh, to have it underneath the stem but I just want to keep the stem and the steerer kind of clean uh, so yeah sometimes you got to pick which part you want to be cleaner so I gave this a try um, but yeah you can just find them online and then just test the headset make sure it's nice and tight give it a shake when the wheels turned as well so you can see if there's any play in the headset if not I just got to redo it and that's basically the last thing. So here's the final bike.
super stoked with these forks. I think they look great and also lightens up the front end. It's pretty funny to kind of mess around the bike now. Um, I didn't do too much riding, but I've tested it a bit more. It didn't seem too bad on the stairs either, being a little bit stiffer. Um, but yeah, super solid so far. And let me know what you think. Big shout out to Magic Components for sending me this fork. Uh, super stoked on it. Check out the website if you want to take a look at it. I'll put up the details here. And yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.